Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Unversed podcast. You have Jerry this time at the helm uh, by myself. We did this before. Don't worry. We can do it again. So here I am today just going to talk about what I've been doing this, this past week. Bear with us as this is something new. We're trying out. You know, it's it should be interesting. I'm not against it. Uh, I actually think this might be a good, good like filler episodes. You know, if the podcast was an anime, the, all these solo episodes would be fillers. Yeah, our, our schedules have been pretty tight this week. So with the holidays coming up or some other bullshit excuse, you know, we're still trying to pump out content for you guys, at least for ourselves, you know, just to get shit rolling, but more for you guys. Let's see. Okay, so the first thing that I wanted to talk about was I have been on a Western kick. I've been watching this therapist on Twitch, Dr. Mick. He does these um these playthroughs where he analyzes the characters. If it's a good narrative, he'll he'll play it and along the way he's just gonna like give a small analysis on maybe why the character is changing the way they're thinking or any slight change he'll fucking dive into that shit so he's he was playing silent hill 2 like the remake so th- that game in itself is one to actually like everything is there for a reason he's doing an excellent job just playing through and then just giving his anal- analysis on why james is a piece of shit i've been actually going back and watching his red dead playthrough oh, man it's like i'm playing it all over again so much so that i actually booted it up I downloaded the PS4 version. Um, I've been playing online um, with a couple of friends here and there, but mostly I've just been by myself walking through the frontier, hunting animals, you know, trying out the garbage DLC. Uh, It's pretty garbage. It's a lot of grinding to get. uh, They added kind of a micro currency in the game. It's called Capitale. You can have only 50 and you need that currency in order to play these special missions where you can get like more money basically which is fine i guess but the missions themselves they're not bad they're actually pretty fun it's just the grind to get there to actually play it like i made the mistake and just went right to them because i'm like ooh, money opportunity and uh yeah they were fun but it wasn't until after the second mission when i realized that it costs capital to fucking play that mission so i ended up with like four left i think I've just been playing like the the opportunities they give you to grind grind out. It's not a lot, man. It's not a lot. So again, I feel like I'm stuck. I'm back at the GTA era where yeah, there's there's a lot to do, but none of it's really that satisfying anymore. Like I'm satisfied right now just kind of filling out the animal compendium like here or there when I see an animal and I just I just look it up to see if I like if I completed its its entry in, in the Pokedex basically. You get money from that, like turning in your samples and shit. And I, I think if you get everything, you it just starts again and you get even more money, which is like uh, that's all right. I'm over it. I'm not really over it though. Uh I don't know. Uh I might just catch myself opening the story mode back up and playing it again, just for old time's sake, because it's it's a phenomenal game. Rockstar is been putting out bangers one after the other a couple years after gta 5 um they only like released the anniversary edition of bully and a vr i was about to say port i think it's an actual standalone game of la noir and then after that was red dead redemption 2 so honestly man like i hate to glaze i hate to glaze anybody but rockstar has just been putting has been putting out bangers there's a new max Payton project coming out so that's pretty cool Because of Red Dead and just getting back into the mindset, becoming immersed, as the gamers would say, I've 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 had actually a Western bug that I've been needing to itch. Uh, I decided to scratch that, begin to scratch that itch by watching "They Call Me Trinity" by um, Enzo Barboni, but I think he was under the name of E.B. Clutcher at the time. It's a 1970s film, uh, Western comedy. I'm just going to read the Wikipedia because I, I don't really know how else to say it. Like, he he reminds me of Sonic as, like, he's sort of, uh, is it destitute, the word I'm looking for? Yeah, okay. I, I guess I could call him destitute. Yeah, because he, so our main character, Trinity, is opening scene. He's just seen laying on his kind of like a, a body carrier or some kind of cargo 
sled type thing. I want you to call it a sled. So he's just laying on his sled, you know, boots off, just chilling, blood on his ripped up, burned clothes and shit. Like he just got out of a fight or like a burning house or something. He seems like he's passed out like from pain or something like that. But he, honestly, he's just like, seems like he's just bored waiting for time to pass until he reaches like any sort of destination. Because he's seen a couple times like moving so he's not like injured he seems like he's just resting and he's got the horse just fucking pulling him anywhere yeah like any sort of civilization i guess he is actually one of the best marks and fastest sharpshooters in the west <laughs> uh it's pretty funny like it's it's really goofy you you it's not like what you expect like this guy's just literally pointing like the prop gun behind him and then he just shoots like two people like straight in their chest so he, it's very comical the way they portray him to be he's like a goofy near do well do we still use that word but he kind of has a heart of gold as we see later on in the movie he ends up running into his like his half brother um bambino awesome name bambino is actually on the run he ended up he tried to he tried to kill the previous sheriff from the town he's the sheriff of but apparently like as we find out later in the movie the sheriff is still alive and he's looking for him and bambino is a wanted man along with his crew that's like later on so what happens is bambino deputizes trinity and trinity like deals his own sort of justice to the town and everybody's like oh you know things were better before trinity came to town or something like that and it was it was pretty cool until yeah news of the the, the sheriff came by and bambino was like oh i gotta get out of here man you don't follow me right oh no no besides like that sheriff which is like an underlying plot there's another two big plots where there's like a group of there's a mormon community just building houses on a, a plot of land and there's this uh rich sort of i don't know th there's just this rich land grabber I, I don't know how else to say it in this times he's like yo you mormons get out of my land this is for my horses and they're like we were here first and he's like god damn it you got me so he ended up hiring a bunch of mercenaries and the and like a roaming mexican roaming band of mexican bandits who like they they showed up they show up whenever they want honestly they're they show up to eat the mormons food and they like all brash and obnoxious and shit but they're they're like it seems like they mean well because they never they're just really fucking violent like anything will set them off especially like the the head bandit so later on like those bandits get hired by the major to drive the mormons out but trinity and and bambino along with like some members of Bambino's crew, like they just showed up looking for him. I think that's how he found. That's how Bambino found out that the sheriff was looking for him. That he's a wanted man now. Bambino, Trinity, and the and Bambino's crew, they all train the Mormons how to fight, like fight dirty, kicking the balls and shit, or like you know just just how to fight because these Mormons don't know any don't know violence. They're you know they're all just sweet. I don't know what to call him, the head, the mayor of the Mormons. Uh, one of them, he, he has these two daughters and like Trinity's like, ooh, women? He f Not only does he, is he in like super hard with the with the Mormons cause now because of the sisters, like he, he actually shows the heart of gold that I mentioned earlier because he's actually like, it, it doesn't show him just hanging out with the girls. He's actually cares about the well-being of the settlers. Like, in the final battle, it's, like, this cheesy, like, five-minute fight scene where, like, the Mormon finds a loophole in the Bible that he's constantly seen reading throughout the movie. The Pretty much, there's a quote in the in his Bible that says, uh, yeah, there's a time for sitting down and, and being complacent, but there's also a time for fighting. And the guy was, like, it says here there's a time for fighting. Let loose, everyone. And then they all just, you know, take back what's theirs. That's pretty much like the end of the movie i heard the second movie was a little bit better than this one so i'm gonna i'm gonna watch that one yeah nothing happens at the end of this one it's just bambino leaves for california trinity he doesn't want trinity to follow him because he's always bringing trouble so he takes off ahead of trinity there's the sheriff you you finally you see the sheriff like right up and ask him like hey have you seen three assholes run by 
And he's like, yeah, they went that way. And he literally just pointed to them. So that's like the start of the next movie, I would think. Because you, you just see the end of the movie, Trinity, like, undoes his gun belt and ties it on the on the on his sled he takes off his fucking boots like the exact opposite of what happened in the beginning of the movie where he's pretty much putting on his boots putting on his gun belt take putting his hat back on going inside and honestly that that part of the movie where he enters like this little this little cafe <laughs> i don't fucking know it's in the middle of fucking nowhere right it's like sand everywhere it's it's like a little pueblito just a little house but it's a fucking like it's a restaurant i think that that scene where trinity asks for a plate of beans and he ends up just eating the whole the whole pan the guy gives him um that scene is probably one of the best um eating scenes in all in all of film history because the way he just like they give him bread. He they give him that pan of fucking beans. I think there's pork in there too, which is fucking. I think it's wine, water, whatever. Homeboy is like starving. It seems like he was on the road for like weeks, probably months. But yeah, just how he eats, he fucking takes the bread and mops the juice from the from the beans and just like eats it all. He gets fucking interrogated, like you look wanted, and then they check him out. He's like, "No, nah, you're good," and then he continues eating. It's definitely a different movie from a different time. Um, there is some subtle racism in this, which is, you know, it's, I think it's fine. I like to look, I, I'll look past it because it's not like in your face. It's just like, si, senor, like that kind of shit. There's a thing I wanted to mention. So they have this, they have these nicknames, right? Trinity and Bambino. Um, Trinity is the right hand of the devil and Bambino is the left hand of the devil. Trinity is he's goaded with a revolver pretty much like he he will outshoot anyone with any speed and it it shows a couple times in the movie he he quick draws so fucking fast (laughs) like he draws on these two guys twice before they can fucking pull out their gun he doesn't shoot them he just like one two and then they just look at him like they just shit their pants it's so insane um and then Bambino is like just he's just a big ass tank nothing can take this man down dude he's he's in a couple of fight scenes right and he's always seen as he's a bigger i don't know if he's a little brother or the big brother but he's the bigger of the brothers you know like this permanent scowl on his face and shit like he is on the run which you know he is he's always seen like just chopping somebody and then that's it for them like one and done this man is made of stone or something because every time he gets hit he doesn't react like he just eats it he he eats a right hook many times he eats crowd of mercenaries and then he pushes them all away like some kind of one piece conquers hockey type bullshit it's it's crazy like if there was a prequel to this i would want to see what they're like to earn those names and i think it's even more ironic because like they're two hands of the devil helping out a mormon community so it's like that in itself is interesting as well. Uh, I think, you know, I think it's a, a neat little detail. Yeah, that was a it was a good movie. Probably give my update on the next movie once once we're all together again or if we do something like this. I've just been honestly reading uh honestly manga, manhwa and books. Except books, I guess. I've been more listening to books, but so for the manga, I've just been waiting for waiting for the updates. Every time a new Komi-san chapter comes out, it's... Man, this last chapter was crazy. Like, they've been... Sometimes it, there are slow moments. I think we're past sort of the slow moments, hopefully. Because it, it seems to be wrapping up, sort of. You The whole class is pretty much, like, taking entrance exams to get into university. This last chapter was was a filler. No pun intended, but... I guess a little bit. Yeah, I I said it that way. So it is it is a pun. Um it was just showing they were just, you know, comparing all the guys were just comparing hog sizes, you know, no big deal. Your average filler chapter in Comey Sun, Comey can't communicate. You know, you always wanted to know what is what size is Tadano's hog? And guess what? It's average. Who saw that coming? I didn't. Okay, I think it was um so the the class has a bunch of eclectic characters, right? You you can have a favorite. Everybody has a favorite. And they're based on different tropes kind of like you have the you have a a 
a student who literally looks like the Buddha. Um, and he's the one who who <laughs> who proposed to like you know how <sighs> fuck what what did he what did he say? It was fucking funny. He said, "Um, there's only one way to decide who, who's the manliest." <laughs> so yeah, he's a fucking. It's it's ironic because he's the Buddha and he's he says like the fucking horniest shit ever. So it turns out to be like the. I don't know what the correct term is anymore, so I'm gonna try to dance around this car- carefully. The not Najimi, but there's another male student. Oh, who who's female presenting? So he he walks in, like it. it so it shows everybody walking in one by one. Like at first it was just Tadano, the Buddha, and then some other classmate, and then they're like compare hog sizes, and Tadano's like. <laughs> And then one by one, fucking all the male characters just start coming in, and they start they started adding him to the ranking. The female presenting male of the class came in, and everybody came in with like like they just came out of the shower. There's fog covering their privates, if not fog, they have a towel covering their. But you know, everybody's all fucking ripped, like every Japanese person is. They all have like the muscles. They're not. They're showing the fucking pecs, you know, and shit. The guy, I think his name is Ribbon, Ribbon or something like that, walks in <laughs> and they cover they cover the nipples, but over the fucking nipples it says it's a boy. I'm like, what the fuck? What? I believe he, he was ranked number one. Like he had the he had the. I think I read it saying to the Buddha was saying the sacred charm, which is like a girthy, wound up rope. You know, with like tassels at the end. But when I say girthy, it's like kind of like a croissant, but like not curled, you know, like, you know what I mean? I've been talking about this too much, too long already. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Uh, Chainsaw Man's pretty cool. Then Denji's actually like got a plan right now. He's, they're both stuck in, I don't know where they're in. They're in, they're in some kind of demon right now. I just fucking don't remember what. All I remember is denji like figuring out the reason for his living or why he wants to keep going even though he had like this depressing depression moment where it's like anybody who he likes or anybody who he loves or coming into contact with like they all just leave they all die they all and he's always just alone he had a flashback of of aki and power and that was pretty sad and then he had like rez but i don't think it they said it was Rez, but I, I would, I would understand it because Rez did have that kind of impact on Denji. But I was also thinking maybe it might have been Aki's uh, mentor, Himeno. I see. I think it was Himeno in that panel, but I could be wrong. It could have been Rez too. But yeah, like he just started flashing back to every everybody who he felt something for, Nayuta, the dogs, and it seems like all is it for that's it's it for genji like he has nothing else to live for but then he, <laughs> he he fucking reminds himself that when um when war kisses denji like and he was still crying about it he reminds himself that i got a boner when i was when you kissed me back there so there is something to live for some <laughs> then he's like as long as there's grub and f- girls i've got something to live for and I'm like, this is the fucking turning point. Denji's coming back around. He's like, wait a minute. So we're here spiritually, but my body still has to be in the real world. And then, I don't know, something's going to happen. Hopefully it won't take forever. But uh, yeah, we're getting somewhere. It's 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 been pretty good. Um, what had happened before this was just crazy. Like, like awakened chainsaw man was just eating demons left and right and then shit just stopped existing like he ate the ear demon and then all of a sudden nobody could hear fucking jack shit he ate the mouth demon and for a second i forgot what the fuck was happening because i forgot they were fighting actual demons like that named demons and chainsaw man like oscars i think brought it up before and reminded me that there's a reason why he Chainsaw Man is so fucking OP. Like whenever he eats anything, it basically just de- deletes it from existence, along with the corresponding the corresponding shtick the fucking demon has. It's some fucking jacked up stand battle, man. It's so crazy. Lookism's been pretty cool. Uh, we're just getting a gu- uh, a gun backstory on why Gun is such an asshole, but you know, trauma. 
it's actually pretty crazy. This is a good Yakuza story. Not the game, an actual like family story where it's like betrayal, um, trust and shit. Like, no, no trust. But see, I don't even know because there's some stuff happening. I don't want to spoil it. That's because Danny's reading it. But it's definitely something to catch up right on right now. It's it's this arc right now is totally different than when the main story of Lookism is. Like you see Gun here and there, but it's mostly about his family and what's been going on and stuff so it's it's been pretty baller it's been a good ride and but i feel like there's still a lot more to go if we're gonna wrap up lookism i feel like we're far from it and uh, i'm just worried because you know with that news of uh uh ichiro oda and and his health just pumping out chapter after chapter now that he's like pretty much in like the last phase of his one piece career like i'm rooting for him i hope he gets better i'm just hope he gets better that's it because uh, with Lookism too, I hope nothing nothing happens. And I realize as I say that, I'm probably jinxing it. So I'm just going to stop right there. Lookism awesome. Chainsaw Man awesome. Komi-san awesome. Awesome. One Piece is awesome. I guess uh, I wanted to talk about talk a little about Warbreaker. Okay, for starters, like the power system for Warbreaker was honestly pretty top-notch. The concept of using breaths and use, and using color to drain so you can put your breath into an inanimate object is crazy and the more breaths you have you can probably i don't know i don't know it's it's just it's it's insane because it's has to do with color it has to do with your breath it's called uh, it's fucking you know what i have no idea but it's crazy biochroma is next level tress of the emerald sea is is a is a nice little story from what I can tell and from whatever false memories I'm making up from Adam talking to me about this before, maybe, possibly, maybe dementia is hitting me early or something like that. But I, I remember Adam talking about spores and the aethers and planets and shit. And like, this is a good introduction to all of that. Um, it doesn't dive too deep into it. It's just like the whole Cosmere, it does let you know that there are different planets and there are people who jump from world to world. There's one that was a world jumper, and there's another one. Uh, there's a witch, and then so it's it's like a, a crewmate who was like cursed to like just speaking stupid. That guy was a world jumper, which was pretty awesome. And then I believe another character was as well, but I I I'm not too sure. Um, if there are any name drops later on, I hope I remember the names of these characters. Uh, if not, I'm sure that's what Wikipedia is for and Google and all that. It's like a more brutal One Piece, you know? Like, this girl just hops on a a ship just to save the love of her life because um, he was the son of a king. The king went away to marry his son to, like, a faraway princess or something like that, I think. And um, so he leaves Tress behind. She, the king comes back, but without his son... So Tress is like, what the fuck, bro? And she somehow finds out he's like, he he was caught by the, by the switch of the Midnight Sea, which is pretty, pretty cool too. You know, good concept. The whole world is just like oceans, not really oceans, but like oceans of spores. Sometimes like the spores get so thick, the boats stop moving. So they just like stand still for until like the the spores shift again and just the the spores when they come in contact with water or anything like i think it's water or anything like liquid they start doing some crazy shit like there were emerald spores where tress was from in the like surrounded by the emerald sea um if the spores come in contact with water they immediately explode into like vines and shit and they don't stop growing there's some there's called zephyr spores, which is basically just super gunpowder. It's pretty awesome. <clears throat> it explodes when it comes in contact with water. It's freaking cool. Um, yeah, so yeah, this girl uh, hops. Um, she finds her way onto this pirate ship, and the crew starts to like. She starts to like find her place and in the crew, and in turn, the crew starts to like her because of what she. I think she brings along like she takes over this 
the part of a like the the cannoneer i think so, something like that but it has to do with spores um so she ends up like tinkering with it learning a little bit more and we're kind of like seeing her and her relationship with the rest of the crew the captain is an asshole but it's he they're like so crazy it, it's insane because like the captain is kind of like a host for a parasite who like on a whim they turn their body into vines like a like some kind of monster right because of that i think she has to just keep drinking water it's insane like she's always seen drinking out of her canteen and you think it's like rum or something like that but it's just water just to appease the parasite or something like that i don't know man good all in all good time uh short read i wanted to get that out of the way before i read uh, before i started way of kings and that's a hefty that's a hefty uh listen um 42 to 48 hours in total so and i believe i think that's it i think that's it gamers that's it for me i don't really want to talk about any news here i kind of wanted to talk about news with the homies just to see their takes on on like the new batman game coming out or or something like that you know but i don't know we'll talk about it soon i'm sure we'll talk about it yeah that's it for me guys um thanks for tuning in to my episode appreciate y'all stopping by listening to me yap about fucking shit i like if you got any questions, comments, complaints, you just want to say hi, unversepodcast at gmail.com. We do have that Twitch open, but we're, I don't know, we're all still trying to figure out like what to do on there. I want to try to have Oscar around for like Tekken nights or maybe like, I don't know, probably just grind, grind out on ranked and just have him there as like a cheerleader or something. I don't know. That's un- I think that's Unverse Network on Twitch. Anyway, guys, thanks for tuning in. We will catch you next time.